Hello, this is Alex at the stadium. Today is Saturday, May 23rd, 2020. And one thing I've been working on during all this downtime is rearranging some things in the store and working on better displaying our hundreds and hundreds of board games that we have. We have, um, I think it's the spreadsheet is approaching 600 titles, and that's not actually counting technically everything. That doesn't count most expansions. That doesn't count, like... Uh, there's a number of things that are the same game but skinned differently. Like, for example, all the Flux and stuff. Uh, I did update the Flux. There's some other things that that um, that aren't on there. So we're pretty close to 600, which is pretty crazy. Um, but I wanted to record going through uh, the some of the changes to the layout. Now, do keep in mind that um, some of this is still a work in progress. Um, some of it we are still figuring out the best way to do things, especially for um, when we are open again and starting to have some people in the store, but still trying to keep things um, and people separate enough to allow them to possibly, possibly actually play some things in the store as well as just shop here. Turn the camera around. Okay. So uh, Monopoly has grown to get its own spot just because there's so much of it. Uh, but it's it's on the other side of the rack that it was already on, and then we're able to to better display some of these other items, you know, all these Unos and all that stuff um, still there. Um, party games still exactly where they were at. Um, we are uh, just I did clean it up a little. It's, it's largely in alphabetical order now. Um, and then there's you know some more stuff on the side here. Uh, we're, we're gonna go continue going this way and then we're gonna go this way but then we're gonna hop back over here last to cover the big additions which you'll probably see in the background um, so this before was two player only games up top and then abstract strategy games down here uh, we eliminated the two player only category and um, you'll see that there's um, these green stickers on a number of games, on a number of titles. And what the green sticker means is that it is two player friendly. And in that capacity, it was a little zoomed in, didn't mean to. In that capacity, um, that means that we would still recommend buying the game uh, if you only intend to ever play it with two people. I mean, some games that's obvious, like chess. Obviously, you're only going to play it with two people. But, uh, you know, other games, like, for example, Photosynthesis, um, a little less clear. And that's uh, throughout the store. There's another color sticker that I do not believe we have any on in the abstract strategy section. So, oh, actually, I lied. There's, there's one right here. Um, Sorcerer Stones uh, it has a blue sticker, which means that it actually um, supports solo play. So for people that like to play solo, uh, look for the blue stickers, and then you will know that that is a game that uh, may fit your needs. So now this, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get new signs made. I haven't just gotten to it yet because, well, peeling the tape off and cleaning that and stuff is annoying and time-consuming. It'll happen. It just hasn't happened yet. Some of them I got off, though, that were easier. But um, This is all area control influence now. Uh, there were dice games and then like Ticket to Ride over here. Those have found new homes. Um, but this is Area Control Influence. You notice we're able to show off the, the wonderful cover art on a lot more boxes now uh, due to the extra stuff that you can see over there, um, which I'll be able to go over soon. Uh, this side is um, still all, uh, well, it is it is cooperative. Uh, we used to have some economy-oriented games down at the bottom. This is all cooperative now on this side. Uh, you'll notice there are a lot of blue stickers and a lot of green stickers on this section, and that makes sense because there's some cooperative games that you just could do the same thing yourself, play as multiple people, or even uh, the rules uh, support playing just an individual character, um, things of that nature. Then over here, we have uh, card games. Uh, we did have um, role-playing storytelling up top before, but that has moved, and now this is all card games. Uh, that is, you'll notice we have lots and lots of Red Dragon Inn and Smash Up. We just did a big restock of those and preparing for 
hopefully reopening soon. Obviously, all the flux and stuff that was there before, things of that nature. Um, and then we've got over here, this is actually all worker placement, despite the tile placement signs that I need to get rid of. Uh, so these are all worker placement. Um, again, much more front facing. We can better display a lot of things. Uh, some, some smaller items hanging up top that, that don't really sit well on a shelf. Uh, this is over here. This this is um, one of the only spots that has multiple categories in the same thing. So um, the first two rows here are um, action and dexterity. So like um, catch the moon, which I, I like to describe as like reverse Jenga, where you're building a ladder to the moon. Um, or slide quest. Which um, you have these, uh, you, you have a thing sitting on these flippers, and you have to um, lev apply leverage to them in order to slide a thing around a track. And there's different, uh, there's different levels and, and things that you can do uh, with different obstacles that you have to go around. Uh, and then down at the bottom, we have a selection of um, educational games. Uh, they do have their own section for educational games, and it doesn't look like a lot here. But that's because most of them are very small box things. Um, so these are the ones that have larger boxes that I couldn't really hang. All of the other educational games are on this side here. And this Braintopia that needs a new hanging thing. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah. Um, I've still got, uh, we've still got some of the, uh, some of the sports um, merchandise things here. Uh, so, like, you know, all the, all the, um, branded spotted and stuff for sport teams and things that uh, we carry stuff for are, are over here. Um, up front, there are, on the glass cubes, it was always kind of um, a hodgepodge of different things, just kind of whatever we felt we needed to put there. It was always sort of unofficially uh, the, the new arrival section, but then there was also other stuff that we wanted to um, highlight because... If people see the store from out there, they might, for example, see Cards Against Humanity, and that kind of helps bring people into the store. But, um, and, and gives them an idea of what the store is about. But uh, I, did, I did do some cleaning up. Um, currently, uh, this half is all bestsellers, and then this half is all uh, newer items, new arrivals, um, items that we, uh, that we did not have as recently as the rest. Um, eventually the plan is for us to get some more shelves uh, for new arrivals to have a dedicated section for that so there isn't this split um, and then this will just all be bestsellers but uh, it's it's remarkably difficult to get extra shelves right now with uh, so many places shut down. So for now this is what we're doing. Uh, more shelves will come later. Uh, speaking of new shelves, we were able to get some. Uh, so this section is one of the other sections that has multiple things. Um, we, they're on nice uh, reinforced glass shelves. But uh, the first three rows here are all um, set collection. So uh, like Ticket to Ride, you have to you know collect the train cards and then turn them in to build your tracks and then complete your routes. And then uh, this bottom row and some of the things on the side here are, um, are area movement. So that's going to include a lot of pickup and deliver games. It's, gonna, it, it, it's kind of a catch-all of a few more niche things that are harder to put into, for example, area control influence or other categories. Um, but area movement does accurately describe all of these games in one way or another. There's some... Uh, some stuff here that I'm about to explain over here. Um, these are all economy games. So it'll include a lot of engine builders and things of that nature. Um, but the point being that you have to build up, excuse me, 
build up an economy and then um, work from start, usually starting from something very small and then managing it and increasing it and growing it and caring for it and gradually building into this giant monstrosity of a thing that is, uh, you know, churning out award winning uh, peppers or attracting nobles in splendor, things of that nature. And then these are some more economy games on, on the site, for the most part. Uh, over here is where the RPG role-playing storytelling uh, games have gone. Um, they, uh, a lot of these obviously also cooperative, um, but there is more of a focus on the storytelling element within them, uh, where you have different scenarios and different characters that, that really create a narrative um, through actual literal narrative instead of just oh, a story through gameplay. Um, and then we've got some more of that down here. Uh, on this side, we have, uh, what was this? This was drafting, <laughs> right. Uh, the, these are drafting games, um, on the first two shelves. So Seven Wonders, Azul, stuff like that. Like that. And then the bottom two shelves are, uh, dice games. And then over here we have um, some more dice games. Uh, I had just moved some other things here. I need to still clean up and rearrange that a little bit, but that's the idea. Um, over here we have tile placement games all on this side. And then there's uh, uh, Arboretum is the... Uh, Arboretum and, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is the lone tile placement games here, but then the rest are all part of... Uh, down here, we have Bluffing and Deduction, these bottom two rows. Top two rows here, Puzzle Games, Dr. Rika, Patchwork, uh, things where you really have to um, kind of uh, Tetris things together and stuff of that nature. Um, and then more Puzzle Games. So those are all of the, the different shelves that we have now for board games with... Oh, and then, of course, there's still a... They, they still need to get re, relocated. Um, the bar will likely be opening up as a store for people to go through later than we will, so I still need to move some things to figure out where to put these clearance tables. But uh, we do have clearance table, clearance table... And then the two little things that likely will be uh, put into storage um, while we have to keep the gate closed. But I might come up with some other spot for them. And uh, yeah, so that is the, the general um, new layout of the store. We are moving Warhammer from this corner to the opposite corner of the store. Uh, haven't moved the paint yet because, uh, well, it's heavy. So, <laughs> that, but that will happen. Yeah. Let me know what you do think of the new layout of, of board games in the store. And if you have any ideas about, um, about our system um, that, that you'd like to put forth, we're always looking for, for uh, more ideas to uh, help people find what they're looking for in a way that makes sense to them. So I'm not going to say we'll implement every idea that's ever thrown at us, but we, we really might implement ideas that are thrown at us. Uh, so do let me know what you think of, of it and what ideas you might have, if you have any. Um, for example, maybe um, the sticker sheets. The sticker sheets that I bought for the green and blue stickers also come with red and yellow, but we haven't been using them because I don't have anything off the top of my head that I think we really need to label. But if there's something that you find really important about a game that you would like to see on a quick reference sticker color on the game, let me know, and maybe we can find enough games where that makes sense to um, add that into our categorization. Uh, yeah, thank you. Where's the button?